This video will cover how to configure the MetPlus wrappers in your environment. There are many MetPlus configuration variables that can be used to customize your evaluation, but there are only a few that must be changed from the default values. I'm going to show you how to determine which values to plug into these variables so that you can start running use cases. Master MetPlus is the script that is used to run the MetPlus wrappers. If you call the script with no arguments, you will see a usage statement explaining how to configure the tool. Using the dash C argument, you can specify configuration files to run. However, attempting to run a use case without configuring your environment will result in an error. There are a few ways to override the required configuration variables. Method one involves creating a configuration file that is specific to you and your environment. This is the recommended approach. You will pass this configuration file into every call to the MetPlus wrappers. Method two is to modify the variables under parm metplus underscore config directly. This method works if you're the only person running the MetPlus code. However, if you're using a shared installation, changes made to these files will affect all users and can cause confusion. Also, if you upgrade to a new version of the MetPlus wrappers, you will have to reset all of the variables that you've changed. Method three is to set the variables directly on the command line. You can override a single MetPlus configuration variable on the command line using this syntax, dash c section dot variable name equals value. While this function functionality can be useful, it would be tedious to type out each variable override for every call to the MetPlus wrappers. In this video, we're going to use method one to create a user configuration file. I created a new text file and named it user.system.com. Now I need to determine which va variables I need to set in this file. In the MetPlus repository, there's a directory called parm that holds parameter files. Under that is a directory called metplusconfig. Any variable in any of these files that's set to forward slash path forward slash to to will need to be set. Let's start with metplussystem.com. You'll see a, a section header called dir and under that a series of variables. Met install dir must be set to the location where met is installed. In most cases, there will be a directory inside called bin, which contains all of the met executables. Here's an example. You should, you'll see met application names such as gridstat, mode, and ascii to nc. There may be other executables in this directory as well. In this case, I'll want to set met installer to user local met. Be sure to put it under the dir section heading. Output base will be set to a directory that you want to write your output files created by the MetPlus wrappers. This can be any valid path as long as you have permission to write in the parent directory. Be aware of disk size limits. Setting output base to a directory on disk with limited space introduces the risk of filling up the disk. This variable also goes under the dir section. There's one more variable that needs to be set to run the metplus wrappers. This one is in metplus underscore data dot com. Input base should be set to the directory containing your input data. The sample data used to run the use cases can be obtained by downloading tarballs from the GitHub releases page or through a Docker data volume. The directory to set to input base should contain subdirectories called met underscore test and model underscore applications. In this example, the directory is called input data input met plus data. Now save your file and we can start running met plus.
Now when I run my use case, I pass an additional file that is my user config file. Now you can see MetPlus has run without any errors. You can refer to the Running MetPlus Wrappers section of the MetPlus User's Guide for more information on what was covered in this video.